I just thought I'd make this video to give you my story, my story on how I became an English teacher in Korea. There's going to be a whole new intake of people, so I thought I'd just throw my story out there. And hopefully some of the people that are coming or just people that are already here, you know, drop me a comment. I want to know like the process that you went through in order to become an English teacher. I actually, I wrote everything down. I wrote this down in February last year, or maybe March, first week in March, but I wrote this down and I was actually going to, excuse my handwriting, <laughs> I was actually going to make a blog post on my blog and I just, I never did. Um, so I thought why not make a video about it? So I'm going to, I'm going to be reading from here, which is why I'm probably not going to be looking at the lens. Um, so for those of you who don't know, I came with EPIC, which is English program in Korea. And what are the requirements for EPIC? You have to be from one of these seven favorable countries. Um, I cannot remember everything off the... Wait, wait. Let me try. You've got the US, Canada, New Zealand, Australia, England, South Africa, and Ireland. Did I get it right? I hope I did. I'm currently writing this from my desk in the teacher's office at my school. I'm teaching at High and Girls Middle School. Desk warming is not fun. I can't goof off on Facebook since there are some teachers still here. I don't want to look like a slacker on my first official day. Oh my gosh, I wrote this on my first day. Yeah, I was desk warming. I didn't know what to do. How did I find myself in South Korea, you ask? Dun, 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 dun. I'll tell you. You might want to grab yourself a plate or something or some tea because this might take a while. See, I, I, I wrote this to be read on a blog, don't touch me. So I've wanted to visit South Korea for many years, ever since I started watching K-drama about five years ago. It was only last summer, so summer 2013, that I made the decision to go. I decided to apply for a teaching job through a government funded program called EPIC, English program in Korea. I'll be honest. The process was long and actually a bit stressful. I completed the application form and then sent it off towards the end of October. I was happy to see that I'd gotten a response after two days and was delighted to find that I'd been chosen for an interview. The interview. About a week later, I found myself face to face with my EPIC coordinator via Skype. It was a great interview and the questions ranged from my reasons for wanting to be an EPIC teacher to my teaching experience. I have none, but I do have a TEFL qualification and a master's. He only faltered when he saw that I'd spent a year away at boarding school in Nigeria. See, I could feel that this was going to be a problem, but I chose not to think about it at that time, you know. Think about things too much and it just ruins your confidence in the interview. Um, about three days later, I found that I'd passed the interview and could now send the rest of my documents in. Yay! Only to find myself being told on the same day that I was out of the program because of that year that I'd spent in Nigeria. The, yeah, the thing is that the official language of Nigeria is English because there's so many tribes and everyone, you know, each tribe speaks a different language and we're colonised by the British, so we speak English and the school curriculum is British, so... You have to have schooled in one of the chosen seven countries from year seven upwards and Nigeria is not on that list. So from year seven upwards, I was just there for year eight and that was it. So technically it's still year seven upwards and the amount of years that you need to have schooled, I think it's like nine years or something, that, that still adds up to nine years, even though I spent one year away because we have year 13 in England. I don't know. And because I had no way of proving that my school was an international school, I was told that I was no longer eligible for the programme. I thought I was eligible because I have schooled in the UK from year 7 upwards. Yeah, spent year in boarding school, came back to the same school in year 9. So instead of giving up like I initially did, with the help of my mum, we got in contact with an awesome family friend. This person volunteered to drive into the country from their house. It's like a two hour drive. I'm not joking, it's a two hour drive from Abelkuta to of Ada village. Oh, was it? Yeah. To drive to my old boarding school to get my 10 year old transcript. Okay, a 10 year old transcript and a letter from the principal giving evidence that my school was an international school. 
After sending these documents to my coordinator, I found myself back in the program, thanking God. Required documents, so your CRB check, uh, legalised degree certificate, so you get it notarised, birth certificate, and a doctor's note. Got it done by the end of November and sent them to Korea at the beginning of December. And that's when the waiting game began. I had to wait to hear where I'd be placed. Two weeks later, I think this was in the mid-December, I received an email stating that I'd been placed in Gyeongbuk province. The next hurdle was applying for my visa, which I couldn't do until Epic sent me my notice of appointment and my contract. It was not, I don't think it's the real, real contract, but just, you know, the pre-contract before you sign the, the real contract. Got my notice of appointment and my contract and went to the Korean embassy, applied, dropped it off. Did I have to pay money? I don't even remember. I think I paid. I can't remember. Dropped it off and a week later, I came back to pick it up. I was so happy. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I was really, really happy. You have no idea how happy I am to be here. So as soon as I picked up my, um, my visa, I booked my ticket to Korea. I was so happy. And on the 17th of February, I found myself, along with my flight buddy Pamela, on a connecting flight to South Korea. Pam and I arrived on the 18th. The EPIC staff met us and the rest of the EPICers at the airport, and we proceeded to board the shuttle bus to our destination, Jeonju University. By the time we reached our rooms, we were completely knackered. The orientation itself was pretty cool. I got the opportunity to meet people from around the world and I had a great time and I made new friends. Um, orientation really did help me understand what life as an epic teacher could be like. I say could because we all have different experiences regardless of whether or not we do the same job and regardless of whether or not we came at the same time. After our epic orientation we were dropped off in Gumi, right, ne right in the heart of Gyeongbuk province where we had to wait for our co-teachers to come and get us. My co-teacher came to pick me up with the virus principal and we got into the car. And that, and as soon as we started driving away, I began mentally freaking out. I, I just remember thinking, oh my gosh, what the hell am I thinking? I'm in the car, I'm with two people I don't know. I'm in a country where I barely speak the language and I'm going somewhere, I do not know where I'm going. Anything could happen. What the hell am I doing? Why did they hire me? Can I actually do this job? Yeah, I was just freaking out. I was just completely freaking out. I was like, why the hell did you pick me? Why am I here? And that was about a five minute freak out. So after going to the immigration office to get my alien resident, yeah, blah, 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 my ARC, my alien registration, alien registration card, yeah, um, I was shown three apartments and asked to pick one. Not everyone gets shown three apartments and I chose the smallest and coziest one. And five days later, here I am, desk warming on my first official day. And I'm bored, <laughs> trying to keep myself busy by writing all of this down and just thinking. But despite the boredom, I am very happy to be here. <laughs> and that is my story. All written down here. That is my story, that is how I got here. And I hope maybe there's something you can get from it, maybe you can relate. Uh, yeah, that's essentially, I went through the application process for you. I wrote it down in my story. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if it's changed this year, so I would advise you to check the website. I will pop a link down in the description box for you to check out. And yes, thank you very much for watching my video.